please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Elysium Movie Thoughts. Now, once the president had given his You're a loose cannon, Jody Foster. The mayor's up my ass on this one. You're off the case, speech. He pretty much disappeared from the movie, and then, you know, a little later he shows up just to be, you know, <laughs> sent out because, ah, this was, you know, a military attack. I am now in control of Elysium. And then he reappears at the very end so Spider can tell him, there is a new president of Elysium. Who is the new president of Elysium, anyway? I, okay, so obviously it's not actually the president. President Patel, I think, which I guess... Does that mean that that kid from Life of Pi and Slumdog Millionaire got to be president? Huh. I guess, you know, well, who wants to be the president? Which is really the game they should be playing at the end of the movie. When did Spider become this egalitarian anyway? This is just... When we first see him, he's, he's like, you know... Okay, so there's maybe some fight the power in there, but he's, he's kind of just a crime guy. It, it doesn't really seem like he was this... Yeah. Excuse me. And, and Spider is just hilarious. It, it, excuse me, the, the, you know, oh, I've, I've actually, I have this thing that I've been wanting to do for a while, but nobody around here has the balls to do it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't think it was like completely wrong for us to laugh at that, but it, it really does. Just, like, like I said in the review, the dude's just never standing still, even on the wonky leg of his. Well, I guess he wouldn't be standing still on that particular leg, but... Yeah, he, he, was, he was more fun than I think was intended. And the, the Hollywood hacking, I, I, I'm, I, th I think the, the world's problems would be... I mean, clearly, it's it's very easy to address. All we have to do is hack into a database and change the word "illegal civilian," you know, yeah, citizen to "legal." So you know, just take out the two, the the I and the L of the legal, and press enter. You know, I guess it runs on MS DOS, and you just yeah, you just enter the the. Does he get Sork? on that thing because I, he's got the big display. I know it's a text only game, but still I just I I, I feel like it might contribute to the gaming experience is, is all I'm saying. Now the <laughs> I I did rather like basically everything with with Jolto Copley. He he is a ton of fun in the movie. I, I quite like that at, at first you really don't know what what his deal is. I think he's basically kind of supposed to be like the you know Blackwater military guys of not military but private contract guys of the of, of District 9. I'm not going to give spoil for District 9 here but with with much less setup for for that but but yeah i we get this one hint of you know when when his face gets blown off and then there's that thing oh he's he's not going to be happy when he wakes up oh, he ate that grenade 
Yeah, that that he did, and there's there's like his his forehead and eyes and and, and the jaw, and everything else is just gone. It, yeah. And he comes back, and he's just devastated. And and they yeah, and, and when they say you know he ate that grenade, they also say it's just like that time he lost his legs. And it is that thing of yes, he gets it back. You know, mine is the the metal things he had you know, near, near the eye. That's why he's so upset. You know, all Jodie Foster had to do was say, I will make sure you get some new metal-y things near your eyes. I am kidding, of course. It, she wouldn't, she, she shouldn't have done that. No, it's, it's... There's clearly some PTSD here. It, it, he, he lost something, and the fact that he got it back with no no hassle, no, no, no doing the hustle. Please, Charlotte Copley, do not do the hustle. I, I do not need to see that. It, it is not good for him. It, it, <laughs> yeah, there, there, some, something happens when you, when you lose something and then you get it back. You, you, he doesn't get to deal with his loss. He doesn't get to deal with the fact that he lost his, his, you know, his, his mouth. It, his neck is enjoying a pleasant breeze, though. It, it just, there, there is always a price. You know, you, you have these ridiculous machines that can just regenerate. That, that also, that, that seemed, that didn't seem very District 9-ish. I, I, I kind of hope that the next time Neil Blomkamp goes more, you know, back to District 9, where everything feels like this is just the real world. You know, this, it was just extremely convenient. There's, there's a lot in this film that's extremely convenient. And one of the, yeah, the, these fix-all machines, which it's in, in the trailer, it wasn't really, it was just barely shown in the movie, but... You know, in the trailer we have that sunbathing thing. I don't... I think you have to do a lot of sunbathing to actually get skin cancer, but then again, skin cancer is something that's really on people's minds. Yeah, I... I don't know. We, we don't know how long she's been lying there for, so maybe it actually did... You know, maybe she has been there for long enough to develop skin cancer. Where did all the Elysians go? near the end of the film, I felt like they just disappeared. Not not even like robot guards, just everyone went away for for the entire climax. That seemed strange. And then, like, like I said, suddenly the president reappears. I, I get that all the people in the control rooms of... Yeah, the, the Elysian control rooms. All those people got blown up. Because apparently the, the the guy only knows how to throw grenades. Like, he he doesn't... I don't know, he doesn't shoot anyone. He just, you know... And, just, you know, flips them the bird and that the whole... Thing. Yeah. Maybe that's just their signature move. Maybe that's why they got, you know, like... Maybe that's why this whole mercenary thing was shut down. That's the only thing they know how to do. Okay, now assassinate that guy. No, don't throw a grenade and flip him off. I did, oh. You're off the case. Yeah, it, it just... This this thing of the, the perfect reconstruction machine, too convenient, and I, I'm glad that Neil at least went and said there are going to be consequences. You can't just rebuild something that someone lost and have there be absolutely no consequences. I feel like we should have seen some of the Elysians be like, you know, we don't enjoy things anymore, kind of, because, you know, we can do anything. Yeah, anyway. The... The, the the once Charlotte Copley got all like perverted and really creepy and nasty. Well, I guess not. Okay, yeah, sh smelling in her scent. It yeah, it it was creepy and yeah, it it was perverted actually. 
I am the expert on, on such matters. The... Uh, yeah, once, once he went there, you just, you really want, you know, once, once his face got blown off, you were like, yes! And when, when, once he came back from that, that, yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you really got to hate the guy. Shalto Koblu played an excellent bad guy in this movie. I, I, I can't wait to see him in more stuff. I really hope he gets more roles. And, yeah, it just... <laughs> it, it was a, a nice, effective... I mean, it's, it's pretty typical. The, you know, the bad guy is, like, lusting after the love interest of the good guy. So, yeah, the good guy's gonna kick his ass. But it really worked, and it felt like it, it fit, because he is kind of, you know, he's, he's this loner. The, the only people he seems to get along with at all are these guys. I swear one of them looks a lot like the guy, the, I think Crow was his name. He looks a lot like the guy who played the alien Christopher, was not his name, in District 9, but I don't know, I, I really should have looked that up, but anyway, yeah, it, he, he is a loner, so when he meets the, a, a woman, it's, yeah, he, he might fall for her, and he probably really wouldn't be good at this whole boundaries thing. But, but yeah, it's, it's pretty badass that, you know, Damon blows his face off. And that just makes him mad. You know, I mean, he was just playing around before, but it, you went and blew off the face. No, that is, that is not okay. It's on. Yeah, that that was, and he was pretty darn intimidating there at the end. And do you hear this? This is the sound of me. What was it? Me coming after you or something like that? I I will destroy you. Yeah, that whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and you know he gets an extremely quick operation to also get a exoskeleton. That felt a little, I don't know, it just seems like, I'm glad that the end fight was still between Max and Kruger, but I don't think that this thing of, you know, another exoskeleton and making it really fast quite worked. It's, it may be, part of it is this thing of, you know, both this and District 9 kind of, once they start, they just keep going. There's no, like, skip ahead and then some time passed and it's, yeah, it, it feels like just one continuous, like, we're seeing everything that happened to them over these hours, these couple of days, or, yeah. And, yeah, there's there's clearly a lot of, I I can't wait for Neil Blomkamp to make the next movie wherein a lone protagonist who is an outcast chased has to break into somewhere hide somewhere that is like you know full of outcasts and yeah people are chasing him for something in his body that is extremely important and could really change things for you know the right people or the wrong people and then at the very end, the the protagonist makes a heroic self-sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. I, I do kind of hope he shakes things up with the next outing, is, is all I'm trying to say here. Now, I suppose that does bring me nicely enough into the, the character of, of, you know, of Max. The, there are some hints that he's that he's more selfish. He's kind of you know, there's there's the story that he you know, the, the little girl tells you know, the, the mirror cat and the hippo. And he's like, What's in it for the hippo? You know, and, and she's like, Oh, I already thought of that. 
He just wants friends. You know, to, balls in your court, Matt. You know, try again. And and he's like, I just got pwned by a six-year-old. I'm I'm gonna leave. This is not going well for me. First cancer, now this. Could this week get any worse? They're, they're going to cancel my favorite daytime soap, aren't they? They are. And yeah, so, so he's, he's selfish, he's, you know, he's willing to give up the, the chance of the reboot for his own life. And, and then at the end he decides to sacrifice his own life so that the reboot can indeed happen. And yeah, it. I don't mind that there is a change, even though again, it's very similar. It just... It feels like it isn't earned. It feels like it's just because the, you know, the, the movie kind of needs it to go like that. We, we, I guess, I guess if there had to be something you could point to it, it would be that he didn't know that Frey was going to be in the fray, I suppose, that, that she was going to be a hostage and that, you know, Matilda, indeed, too, was going to be part of it. So, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, at the end, he sacrifices himself with the, the express intent that this is for Matilda. Now, basically, maybe that works, but it's just like, this is... Excuse me. This is almost right after we've just had these had the established, had it established that he is selfish. We've just heard the story, and he literally, he gives himself up with the grenade thing and the whole thing, and then he sees, oh, they're hostages. Oh, well, then I'll change my mind. It just, it's, it's too soon, and we don't see that much of, maybe it's too subtle in his performance, Maybe that's being too generous. No, I, I like Damon a lot and his performance in the movie. No, but it's just... Yeah, I, I don't... Yeah, it, it doesn't fully work. Now... The... One thing I thought was quite a problem in the, the movie was we have these difficult problems that are very carefully set up as difficult problems so that there is a bar to reach. Because where else are you going to drink on a lonely Friday night? And for example, this is the, the immigration issue where they, they are literally willing to shoot planes out of the, the sky and it is impossible to get you know medical treatment in the machines without the you know DNA fake ID thing and all these things and literally yeah so so we've we've set up all these difficult problems and then, we have a lot of easy solutions. There's an astounding amount of lucky coincidences and, and convenience in this. It, and this is again, like I said in the review, that maybe Neil Blomkamp should get some help with the, the script writing. We, we have these, you know, be, because it is impossible for someone who is not a citizen or, you know, at least has a fake ID. <laughs> yeah, either, you know, it'll allow you to drink or it'll allow you, you know, free health care. It is impossible 
without that to get the, the, the health care. And so the way that is solved is the reboot, which also solves this issue of, you know, it, the movie is too determined to have a happy ending. There is, and this is again very much, District 9 does not at all go for a happy ending. It just goes for a slight, you know, a tiny victory, a, a one battle won, but a war still very much ongoing. And that's much more effective. This twists and turns and bends itself impossibly out of shape in order to have that happy ending. And it, yeah, so so the the reboot so that everyone can become a citizen by the end. And presumably there's supposed to be enough space on Elysium that all of them could go there or enough money that it could be built bigger or somehow there's going to be technology or technology will be developed so that they could actually make the yeah the 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 earth you know pleasant and habitable again and the overpopulation is also not exactly going to solve itself are they going to colonize planets or <laughs> make make a a lottery for finding out who is is more or less uh, that was terribly dark sorry yeah it, it and and the reboot well why is that you know how how do we explain that well Maybe the Secretary of Defense actually wants a, you know, to, to stage a coup because she's mad at the President for having more power than her in spite of only being in two scenes. And, she, yeah, it, I, I do like that, like, her character was established, you know, briefly but effectively as, you know, family person, she does, she has people she cares about, she does want to protect these people, you know. And and her getting murdered by Kruger and the, the whole mirror thing was a, a quite effective way of saying, you know, the, yeah, the whole thing has now, excuse me, it's, he has been unleashed. Anyway, yeah, so, so the, the coup is necessary. Even though this doesn't even feel all that, I, I don't know, maybe it is just the contortions of the script to make this work, but I can't really think of much of a, what this is really an allegory for, considering most of the movie is allegorical to reality, I don't know that that many people, it sounds harsh, but from what I can tell, a lot of people are actually, the, the, the people who have a lot of power and, and enjoy a lot of advantages seem somewhat callous towards the, the, the cost. The, what what it means to other people, the the poorer people. So I I don't know exactly who the you know the the president is supposed to be representing in that he isn't willing to go as far as maybe it's just so she could have a foil so we could know that she is willing to go that far, but then why why did that have to be one of the other rich people? I. Yeah, it just doesn't completely... Maybe it shouldn't as much of... See, that that I think could have worked, been worked into what I talked about earlier of them being bored. If the rich people were just bored there, she could be the vigilant one, and the others were like, oh, come on, why, why even bother with this? You know, why even bother with the protection? And she's like, 
you're too young to remember how difficult this has been to maintain. When we created this at first, there were a ton of problems. People, the poor people wanted up here and we had to fight hard to protect ourselves. You were born after that time. I remember. That could have maybe worked, but yeah, so further... Okay, so we need the reboot, but if she already has it, then, you know, the movie plot isn't quite gonna work, so somebody else needs to have it. And then, maybe the Max character can get it. Okay, so, why would anybody else make it? Because it's, it's like, I don't know, treason, I guess? <laughs> Uh, well, maybe it's the non bain capital guy who's like, you know, no, I'm actually trying to make my business profitable. I don't just want to slice it up and sell it off to and, and lay people off. And so, yeah, we have the, the, the Fickner character and so he has he becomes the boss of Max, so that who's callous towards Max, and Max gets the the face with you know when when he realizes that it's Max abducting him, you know is just like that's karma, bitch. It's that's that's awesome. So so yeah, it's just these really ridiculous contortions that the script has to go through just to make sure that there is an easy solution, not just a solution, to these tough problems that were set up earlier. And the... I, I guess the... the the, the bit with it being in the, you know, the, the computer in the, in the back of the head of Max and, and this whole thing of, you know, you have something in your head which is very valuable. I guess Neil Blomkamp was the one guy who liked Johnny Mnemonic. If you haven't read William Gibson, do so now. Anyway, yeah, it. I also wanted to talk about this. An another issue with with the the climax is how quickly suddenly some problems get conflicts, direct conflicts get solved very effectively, where. For most of the movie, the three mercenaries actually pose a significant problem. And then with the crash landing on Elysium, Max is able to take two of them out in no time. When, once he actually meets back up with them, you know, once he gets the, the hose back out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. And, and that whole thing, you know, at, at first it just looks like a Hannibal Lecter mask, but yeah. Actually, maybe that is, you know, part of Hannibal Lecter's mask. That would explain that, that strange sound he, he enjoys making. Yes, I, I did just give you the mental image of Sir Anthony Hopkins with a long hose in his mouth. You're welcome. Now, yeah, it, it just suddenly it's extremely easy and it just... it kind of undermines the challenge earlier. I feel like it should have been spread out. Like he should have maybe been able to take one of them out maybe before they left for Elysium. Now, when I saw when when he grabbed the grenade and said, "You know, I'm gonna blow up my head if you don't," you know, I literally did think, "Is he actually gonna be holding that thing for the entire trip? Is he gonna toss it because that's not gonna that blowing up too close to the engines?" No, but 
Yeah, he actually holds it, and, and you're like, is he seriously gonna hold Oh, wait, I guess he isn't gonna hold it for the entire trip, because he blew up Kruger's face. You know, so, yeah. Maybe Neil Blomkamp had that same childhood bully that you know, Wes Craven did. Fred Krueger. Anyway, yeah, it's just that was that was that was cool because again, it that's that's what I'm talking about in the the review of this brief and subtle build up, but it it works. You know, you get why Max gets so infuriated by what's going. He just wants this creep away from Frey. You know, whatever the cost. So, yeah. Now, the... I suppose that more or less covers it. I... I felt that the, the early parts of the movie made very clear how unfair the world is to the, the, the poorer people. Max gets sarcastic with, you know, these police robots during the stop and frisk. And it's literally, you know, which I, I don't know. I'm, Bill O'Reilly tells me that stop and frisks are great, so I don't know what Damon's issue is here, but yeah, he, you know, he's like, what, what's in the back? Um, hair products, mostly. That's funny. I, apparently, in this, in, in 2154, you know, a sense of humor is a crime, so yeah. <laughs> now, the... Yeah, and, and they break his arm, and it's like, report to your parole officer. But I was gonna head for... Okay, I'll report to my parole officer. Are you being sarcastic and or abusive? And, you know, it's like, oh, well, what was it, six months more of your... Or eight months, you know, on your parole. Wait, what? It's, yeah, okay. And so he gets to work. You should have been here earlier. Yeah. A robot broke my arm, and then I had to report to my parole officer. I'm here now. I, you, know, you can't work with that. I'll, I'll, I'll work with it. I promise. You know. I said, okay, but I'm docking you half a day. You're lucky to even have this job. You know, job creator, hard, hard at work. And like, did you break the door? No, it's just stuck. I, I I'm trying to reset it. You know, he. As far as I could tell, he was just pressing the button over and over, so I guess he's working by, you know, the elevator lodge. You just keep pressing the button, it'll eventually work. <laughs> but then it's like, you know, go in there or I'll find somebody else too, and then you're fired. You know, <laughs> so yeah, Max really, really has been pining for that employee of the month, you know, poster picture so he goes in and of course it happens uh, yeah it's it's really beautifully set up as well you you just you know that it's gonna close and uh, yeah the, the way that was played and then you know no it's too late emergency procedure that was the one good bit of slow-mo in the film Actually, I the the two bits I was mentioning in the review was the the stuff in the in in that action scene where you know he's gotten the exoskeleton and he's firing the gun at the yeah first at the robot and it just explodes yeah that's it's it's just. It's bad use of slow mo. I kind of get why, because if it wasn't, if there was no slow mo there, then it it, it would probably be too fast for us to properly comprehend what even happened. But it just doesn't quite work. And then the second time is when Charlton Copley uses the shield, and again I get it why they used it, but it just didn't really work. It kind of takes you out of the of the action of the scene. 
now the and and I guess the the shield is specifically there so that Charlotte Copley won't die from stuff that would otherwise kill him because otherwise there can't be more than one fight between him and Max. Now I suppose that more or less covers and and then of course you have after you know he gets cancer the you know, Fickner is left oh, don't breathe at me hold it you know cover your mouth and then he you know he looks at him is his skin gonna peel off get him off the couch I don't I don't want the to have to replace that the sheet he's he's on and you know, and. And Matt's laying there, and he sees the face, and he sees, okay, this guy is not concerned with, you know, this, my, my problems whatsoever. So, yeah, he's, he's gonna pay. Now, I think that pretty well covers everything. So, yeah, please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.